Hello, this is LJ Bothell, and this is Microsoft Excel, a basic overview of making and modifying table objects in Excel. And it should be transferable skills regardless of the operating system you're on. So I have a document here that's just a big old data range, a big, big old data set, and I don't know if I have any data ranges on it. I can take a look. Let's see if we do. I'm going to check out the formulas, name manager. There are no data ranges named on here. What I want to do is I want to take all of this data and I want to convert it to a Microsoft Excel table. And that will keep the rows and the columns aligned and locked together so that it's easier to sort and filter things and uh, to have the object not accidentally get corrupted by having something um, carelessly moved. So ideally, what you want to do is select the data you want to make a table. It's just the simplest way is to simply select the data and make sure that you include the header row so that that can go in your table and so that the data in the columns that matches what the uh, header name is um, actually has a sense of purpose in the table. And we're going to come over to the Insert tab. We're going to click the table icon in the Tables group. And it will basically pull up right away the create table little handler here. And it will indicate that you seem to have selected cells A6 through J36. These little uh, money signs in here are Excel's way of stating that this is a fixed range, not relative. And we'll talk about relative and absolute ranges at a later time. But this is basically the range of your table. And you want to make sure that my table has headers is checkmarked, and then click OK. And I now have a table. Yay! Now, great. Now, I'm going to make this screen a little smaller by zooming outwards so you can see more of the table. And uh, it's, it's just as easy to do most of the basic things like widening your columns and changing the uh, row height of things. You would still want to select all of the rows. And then you change the row height and it's 16, we'll make it 20. You could do things like that in your table. You could come to your home tab and you can easily change the alignment. So the data in the cells is top aligned and left aligned, unless it's currency, then currency or accounting would stay right aligned, but there's none in this particular table. Um, and the good news is that you can easily sort and filter things with these built-in buttons. But before we get to any of that, um, let's take a look at the fact that we now have a contextual table design tab and, and ribbon that goes with it. So this allows you to do some things with the table that are really important. One, you always want to name your table. That means that if at some point later on you use this table as a data range or you use it in a formula, it will make it easier for Excel to patch in information into the formulas instead of you having to choose from table 1 and table 3 and table 40, depending on how big your workbook is. So this happens to be a customer table, so I'm just going to call it TBL customers. In this particular case, I'm using a little prefix called TBL to indicate this is a table. I put that in there. Now the good news is, is that you can, in fact, within a table, still set a named range. So I'm going to select a range of first names and last names, go to formulas, go to define name, and I'm going to call this range, I'm going to call it RNG Cust names. And that indicates this is a range and not a table. And I could also, you know, do one row at a time or do a few columns or whatever. So that works just as well within a table. But what else can we do in the table design? Let's take a, we're not going to work with pivot tables at this point or slicers. And we're not going to export anything. What we want to look at is just the table design of how it looks. Right now, the header row is on. If I turn this off, the header row would seem to disappear. Well, that wouldn't help us very much. The um, banded rows is just the style. I could turn those off or on. If I turn them off, I could make banded columns instead. I can have the first column be bold. So maybe I want the customer ID to really punch out there. And then the filter button is what allows me to do filtering and simple sorts like this. 
Now I'm going to, for the moment, turn off the filter button because there's one more thing I want to show you, and it's in the view where you could go in and you can set, say you have a table that's got like 800 rows and you'd like your header up here to remain in the same place while you scroll down the page. So what's very easy to do is to select the row below the header row and then come up to freeze panes, click freeze panes. Then as you scroll down, your header row remains in place. And this is while it's a table object. And it doesn't matter if you go into table design and put the filter back on, it still works. So that's a really easy way of organizing things. So now you can also do just some really basic um, filtering. So say I wanted to do the customer's last name, sort A to Z, I could. And I could come over here to region and I could use uh, the filtering to take out anything that has West in it. And then the table would be shortened up. Now here's one more thing we can do. What is this total row? Well, the total row is really useful if you have numbers in here. Right now, all we're getting is a count of something and it doesn't mean anything. But if this particular table had salaries in it, taxes, revenue of some kind, a total row would be great because then you can see the sum of things at the bottom of the table. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So that was just a little bit of what I wanted to show you about the making and the modifying of tables. I hope it was helpful to you.